Well, here we are again. We're going to do an experiment to illustrate the difference between linear growth and exponential growth. We're going to do a tapping exercise. It's going to be initiated by Amid. Amid's going to tap Peter on Peter's right shoulder, and then he will stand up. And then Peter will pass the tap down the row, and we'll see how long it takes for the tap to swing all the way through the rows, ending with Grant. I'll count three, two, one. Grant's going to time. You'll be the point man. Three, two, one, go. How much time, Grant? 19 seconds. Great. Sit down, everybody. Okay, we're going to try it now differently to illustrate exponential growth. This time, Amid's going to tap Peter's desktop and Wilson's desktop behind Amid and stand up. And then when you get your desktop tapped, you tap two desktops and stand up. Grant's going to time. Are we ready? Three, two, one, go. How long? Six seconds. All right. <laughs> now we're going to do it again. This time we're going to initiate it from the center. So Sebastian, you're going to be the person who leads off. Camera ready? Three, two, one, go. Grant, how long? Three seconds. All right. Question for you. What happened in the first case in terms of people standing up? What happened? Yeah? The rate of people standing up was constant. The rate of people standing up was constant. It was about a half a second per person standing up, roughly. Now, we then did two taps. So, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. Six generations of tapping. At a half a second a tap, six times a half is three. So we see the exponential growth effect. And that's what we see when there's a virus spreading. You can see, for example, if Sebastian was infected, this is a crude model of a virus, pass it on to the two neighbors and the four neighbors and the eight neighbors. So it's a model for the spreading of a plague, an epidemic, and it's also a model, as we saw earlier, for a chain reaction and fission. Thanks all for participating. Cut.